oxy sensor control code, which does not mean you have a bad oxygen sensor. It means the computer's listening to the oxy sensor, or looking at the oxy sensor signal, and running out of range before it can get control. You mean don't change the part? Don't change oh the part. Oh my God, it's, <laughs> that's enlightening. Not, test, don't guess. That's it, test, don't guess. So we got a whole bunch of information here. Now let's go down our list and I'm gonna pick stuff like map voltage. I'm gonna do select, okay? I'm gonna pick, uh, let's pick bank one oxygen sensor voltage, select. Let me go down and pick RPM. It might be under engine speed or... Yeah, it may be under engine speed, actually. Yeah. Vehicle speed sensor. Give me a second here, I'm trying to find engine, there it is, engine RPM, and I'm going to select. Now, show select. Now we got three of them. Watch when we start this vehicle up on the update rate. And it's instantaneous, isn't it? And now we can graph it, and we can see what's going on. And look at our map voltage. I always ask this in a class. What should the map voltage be? And you should know this because this is important. Let's say we had one of those poor quality PCV valves in the car, okay? Or we had a bad vacuum leak. What's gonna happen to the map voltage? It's gonna go It's tough. gonna be high, right? And we're gonna have an issue. And it's gonna think you're asking for power and it's gonna enrich in the mixture. By the way, look at this, five volts, what happened? It went down and you notice we're reading between two and three volts, okay? So there's our oxygen sensor. Now I'm gonna race the car up just a little bit. Okay, so here we go. But you could see a, 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 an example where the map wouldn't move, um, and you'd have to examine that. Also, it's a good idea maybe to throw TPS up and watch map and TP, or watch, if it doesn't have a map and has a mass air, TP and mass air. Now let's go back and look at all data, okay? So we're going to show all, and let's take a look at that engine RPM sensor. I'm going to sort by graph. I'm going to turn the EGR one off. So there's our engine RPM. You'll notice the update rate is just a little bit slower because it has to fill up all of the buckets. Not much slower. Now, generic OBD2, it would be considerably slower. But here, they made it a bit faster. Now, see, we're down already. My cap was showing me 700 and we were still up there. So right now, I'm going to bring it up. My cap is 2,500. You're not at 2,500. This is especially important. And I'm down to seven. This is especially important when you're trying to correlate two signals and they're not updating at exactly the same time. You could be fooled by the data if you have too many parameters trying to update on the in the tool. So th that's the real time when you want to select just a few things because they'll respond almost instantaneously. No doubt, no doubt about it. So let's uh, take a look here and see if we had some 
questions on a particular symptom on a car. So you want people to have questions on uh, problem yeah. cars they have right now? Well, let's look at a couple of things here. If you have a problem car, first place you should go is look at TSBs after checking all the basics. Technical service bulletins are super important to check and look at. And here we got, on this particular car, you got four of them. Sometimes you're not going to find everything in there for the particular vehicle. Why? There may not be a particular issue on that vehicle. Yeah, the other thing is, you know, you know, we all know there are cases where a manufacturer comes out with a TSP and your vehicle's out of that model range, but you still have the problem. <laughs> and it just has to be, uh, you know, maybe it hasn't gotten into the system yet. That's uh, true. They don't know that it's extended beyond the original model range or the original date range. So right now, I wanted the component information. I'm going to map sensor. And this is real neat. Location, right side front of engine. Connector, the connector will come up. There's the connector, three wire connector. Diagram, so I know where to put it. Okay, I know it's nighttime, guys, but I'm talking about where to put it here on this connector. Test connector. And we'll see five volt sensor and map signal, okay? So sensor ground, you're not going to use that to get your, your reading from. You're going to get it from map sensor signal. However, if there's a, a wacko signal, you have to check all of those wires, 5 volt sensor ground and signal. That's right. Now, a little caution. A lot of times people like to go to this ground right here and then put their red lead here of the scope or meter. So black lead of the meter scope, red lead here. Here's the problem. If there's a problem with that ground, you may think there's a problem with the particular sensor. You should always make sure that that ground has 100 millivolts or less voltage drop. So use a good ground first, always check it. Personally, I use a good ground next to the component that's real good that I know I could scrape my uh, little end of the scope or meter in, and then I back probe it with a T-pin. And here they tell you where to put it. It's really good to know where to put it. Description measures the absolute pressure in the intake manifold and sends a signal to the ECM PCM. The MAP signal is used in the, uh, in the air mass calculation. Super important for fuel control. Maybe some of you remember, you may remember some of the Chrysler vehicles that had an issue where you had to put a MAP sensor kit in. You may remember some of the old Cadillacs at the same problem. You had to go from near the glove box and reroute the hose because water would stay in there and freeze. So these are certain things that are out there that you should be aware of. Map is super important. Let's take a look at a few more things. So here's more component data. Let's say you didn't understand the crank sensor. Tells you the location, the connector, The diagram, now one of the things you should know, older Jeeps used to use AC voltage, right? Well, this would be like a whole effect sensor, why? We got a 5 volt signal, we got a crank shield, we got a signal ground, okay? So we would have to see if it's an AC generated signal or is it a whole effect signal? Because a lot of times now, all effect signals are using two wires and the ground of the vehicle. So keep that in mind. And description of the circuit. And the voltages of all effect signals can be uh, can vary wildly. They can range anywhere from uh, you know low low voltages, 0.75 volts, all the way up to system voltage. They're always, however, a uh, square wave. Um, any questions so far, Craig? Um, how do you look up TIDs and CIDs? How do we look up TIDs and CIDs in mode 6? The best recommendation I'm going to have for you for TIDs, test ID, SIDs, component ID, is go to the, in this case, would be Tech Authority, the Chrysler website, and I'm going to give you a website that you should always go to.